Hello and welcome to this another week of our online lectures on multimedia and in this week we'll be learning you know fundamental concepts of video so uh, let's start our today's lectures so we'll be you know covering you know these issues while learning some concepts in video and that is types of video signals and how analog video is formed or we can say the analog you know signal uh, analog video signals and we also know something the very basic and introductory concepts on digital video so see uh, what is video so the in the very beginning we are going to start on types of video signals and here the types of video signals is component video composite video and s video so before we explain this component video composite video and s video uh, so let's you know remind that what is video if you remember correctly the video is basically a sequence of image in rapid succession right so uh, for examples that let's say we play 30 frames or or it means that 30 images per second if we display 30 images per second of any object that you want to display on, on on in a video form so definitely it will look like the real and, and continuous so that's why video is we can think the video is basically a sequence of images uh, that plays in a very rapidly so for example 30 frames per second so whatever uh, it is so so this video because it is a sequence of images and 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 let's think about that image is is what i mean is basically if we if we have a color image then it's all about you know red image red plane green plane and blue plane right so it's 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 the same okay so the same things here we also deal so now let's start with this component video the component video when comes you know they see the component video that higher end video systems they basically use this component video and what it do is you know uh, as you know that it in an image uh, we have red plane green and the blue plane right or we can say red image plane green image plane and the blue image plane so in component video systems what we do from the red plane image we produce you know the red video signal and for the green for the green or based on the green plane image we produce green signal and the same based on the blue image or blue plane image we produce blue video signal so ultimately we have you know three video signals each for you know fundament for each fundamental color right so as you see you know these sorts of you know interface that we have three cable one is for red one is green and another is blue it means based on the blue image this you know based on the red image this red video signal is produced and it is transmitted or communicated you know via this you know red channel or red cable similarly for green and similarly for blue so if you look at the component video out interface it looks like that you know that this is red and this looks like blue and this looks like green but ultimately you know it's more about uh, it's fine this red green blue but we also can think of this is exactly you know the yuv you know yuv color model so yuv color model you know in yuv color model u and v basically the color signal and y is the luminous signals or brightness information right 
so this y u v was basically for digital concepts the analog concepts that we already learned in color model but its you know digital version is called y and this for color for blue and color for red you know so that's why we say y and this is color for b color for red so that kind of information but anyway so this is not that important that you know for this slide so component video means we have three different signals one red one for green one for blue and so each one each channel is communicating and dealing with different different color signals because you know the three channels are separated so there is no interference between them so that's why the component video quality is always very great but you know that for each signals for each you know color we are using separate channel so definitely it requires you know uh, communications more communications bandwidth and also we have to have you know some very good synchronizations between these three components right because you know if red components comes at a different time than green component then the video will be completely messed out so uh, synchronization mechanism should be very good among these you know signals so that they come at the same time or at the proper time so that is the you know main thing so the component video quality is good but it requires more bandwidth and it needs synchronizations you know the one common interface that we see for example the visio connector if we just you know uh, elaborate this visio connector it looks like you know this sorts of interface and you see in this visio connector you know there are three pin out for example this blue green and red these three pin basically are dedicated for you know color channels so this visio connectors is also basically you know the part of the component video systems okay now we talk about you know composite video now the, now the composite video is you know here we will use only you know single you know channel or single connector we say so these are, are some i mean examples for example rca connector and what does it rca mean rca means radio corporation of america but nobody actually knows about this mostly people are knows this this sort of connectors called rca connector now rca connectors only has a single channel so that means all the color information and the luminous informations are you know mixed together so as you know that whatever your signal is uh, if we need to transmit from one place to another within the systems or you know let's say from air wirelessly or wired it's all about you know electromagnetic wave transmissions right so if it is so for example let's say you know electromagnetic waves mean we can represent this let's say cos 2 pi f t let's say this kind of things right so this is some sort of we can say this is a cosine wave the cosine wave itself is a representation of electromagnetic wave and it might have some amplitude let's say a so we can say this is this you know a cos 2 pi f t this is some cosine expression and this might be your signal right for example so y equal a cosine 2 pi f t and this f is called the frequency you, you you already know these things so this is called frequency so so this is a cosine frequency right so ultimately what we are doing is this electromagnetic wave is you know being transmitted from one place to another and whose frequency is this f f is the frequency okay now what happens so let's say this a is, is, is some information this is the frequency at this frequency we will send some information this information is amplitude let's say now if it is so what we can do so this a we can replace you know this a we can replace so instead of this a how about you know let's say we have you know a color model let's say y e v color model and so instead of this a what, what we can do we can write this u okay let's say this u so we can transmit this you know color information u 
okay so now let's we have u cos 2 pi ft so we are transmitting this color information u with the frequency f okay now the same frequency we can use to transmit the color information of v okay but because you know it will be the mixing up so what we can do we can do a phase shift of this one this is cosine wave we can now take you know sine wave for example sine 2 pi ft so this v now we have this one so v sine 2 pi ft now let's say we just add up this together cos 2 pi ft plus v sine 2 pi ft so how about this one so this is exactly the color information so we are transmitting the color information u and v with the same carrier f right and the phase shift is different because this is cosine and this is sine so this is let's say this is our color information or sometimes we say color signal okay sometimes we say color signal or sometimes we say chroma signal chroma chroma signal okay so ultimately so what we are doing is we are you know using the same carrier and the color information we have then mix up this c now in addition to that what we can do we have this color signal and in addition this color we also have the remaining things is if you remember this y and y is the brightness or luminous information so what we can do we can take the color information and then we can mix up you know this y so y plus c so y plus c exactly your video signal and this is we say composite composite video signal composite video signal so ultimately what is the what is the form ultimate form y is y and the color information is this one so that is u you know cos 2 pi ft plus v sine 2 pi ft so that is the thing you know so so this is the same equations this one so this this is the composite video now you see this all mixing together mathematically right now this all things mixing together so this mixed signal is called composite video signal this composite video so this rca connector is suitable to transmit these sorts of composite video signal but you see the color information mix and then in addition the chromina i mean luminous information or intensity information is also mixed so that's why you know when we wanted to receive this information from a receiver or we wanted to reproduce the color definitely we need some mechanism that how we can separate this y and how we can separate this color information so that we need to apply some sort of filtering mechanisms and that we will learn shortly that how we can you know recover this color information from this one you know single you know mixed signal called composite signal okay so and let me tell you one other thing that you see this y because you see this one so this thing this one is cosine so this u basically multiplied with the cosine wave and this v is multiplied the sine wave and because you know cosine wave and the sine wave is is, is you know 90 degree apart each other so that's why we say you know if we say this one is in phase component in phase then this one we say you know quadrature component quadrature because if this one is in phase then it's 90 degree is called quadrature okay so so sometimes we say this u information is basically i and this v information we say sometimes say q and accordingly we also say y iq model as you know that right so in that case this e will be i and this v will be q okay so so that's the thing so here we also see the u for example the ntsc television systems i and q are combined into a chroma signal so this is that one chroma signal and then what you do you know a color subcarrier is then employed to put the chroma signal right so this is the color subcarrier here we wrote the f but you see this omega basically the angular frequency 
is basically 2 pi f right so that's why this is the same expression that what i have written here so so that is the things and in addition this color you know information we just add this luminous information y okay we will be learning a little more uh, at a later slides so this is all about the composite video so now what is the situation you know the situation is because we are mixing color information and intensity information and that's wrapped into a same signal in in and, and we are passing through one you know channel so definitely there will be some interferences between you know, brightness information and the color information so uh, but you know it is cheap and it is you know because it is a single wire systems so and there is no complicated synchronizations stuff so that's why composite video is basically cheap and easily available compared to others but these days you know the video connector is also cheap so as a compromise between you see so we we had you know the composite video signal composite so this is one wire system and we had a lot of interferences especially between color and the uh, you know the intensity or brightness information or we say luminance and you know color color is we say chrominance chrominance that i said already color and uh, you know the brightness information technically we say this is the luminous information luminance information now in composite video signals this chrominance and luminance we mix together in fact we mix even the color is also mixed right so and that's why that is a problem and in component video what we had is all thus all things are separate r z and b all are separated but you see this is one extreme this is another extreme so as a compromise between these two what we do is you know s video now, s video mean separate video now, separate means we separate be we separate between the color information and the luminous information because luminous information is basically re the real you know the the uh, video information right so that's why it is safe to separate you know the luminous information from the chrominous information so for example these sorts of connector is for s video and here you see this four and three so this four and three basically you know the pin three is for luminous information this one and this four is for chrominous information so we have two separate channels for sending luminous info that is brightness information and color information so the interference issue and interference problems are much more improved and interference is reduced but you know cost is in between because here we have you know separate you know in electronic systems now you know i will explain how we form analog video so analog video <clears throat> it's all about you know that how we you know collect time varying image information now what is that time varying image information so let me explain here a little bit then it will be easier to already i gave you this information in in our in the beginning slides here it will be recap and some uh, little bit more details you see let's say let's see you know first you know show you these slides yeah let's say we we like to you know let's say this is our object this rectangle big rectangle this is our object that we like to have the video or let's say this is a real scenario or this is this, this is a real life photo okay maybe this is maybe this is a photo or picture or you can say this is a real scene that that for a room that we are taking a picture from a video camera right in this portion okay we will be taking the you know video of this portion um, of certain photo certain image or let's say certain a real scenario or real you know scene so uh, it is better to think about this as an object rather okay so so if you remember that how it works so this is a this is our that you know for you know scene the real scene or real object that we, we like to have the photo or more appropriately video here so you know we need to expose some light right 
so that you know in every video it's better to expose some light if we if we shed some light on the object so the object you know it looks more bright and so that every spot we can you know nicely collect so this you know light you know goes on here and then it's reflect from east point right from east point the light is being reflected right you can think in this way that and and you see that for for we we have i mean imaginary line on this you know object imaginary line and on each line we have these pixels so from each pixels you can think of this light is coming right and now here we have the you know the our digital camera let's say here we have the digital camera here okay so so this is our digital camera so from this digital camera we are now capturing this light okay we are now capturing this light in fact so from an from an optical sensor right from an optical sensor now think about that we are just let's say we are particularly let's say placed on this line on these pixels now now what is the nature of this you know sensors optical sensor that inside the camera if this light is reflecting much more then you know there is a camera camera circuitry then the voltage produced here the voltage produced here will be much more and if this you know reflected light is less then the voltage will be less so that means what if our you know let's say a very particular you know spot is a, is a dark spot or let's say less bright so we are having you know less voltage and if a very particular you know spot is you know more bright then we have more voltage so ultimately we are converting this entire you know photo entire objects just you know as, as a, some fluctuation of some voltage right so you see here as you go as we scan a line from left to right maybe at some so as we scan from left to right so definitely you know you you from at this particular point maybe you get a very high voltage because maybe it is very high high bright and bright and at this point maybe you record very less voltage as you go so as you go the right side so the voltage will be somewhere you know high and sometimes voltage will be low sometimes again high sometimes will be low high low 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 high in this kinds of pattern right or we can think of like that let's say we are scanning a line so maybe 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 from let's say from this is let's say maybe a very particular start of the line and let's say this is i'm just talking about a very particular let's say this line okay a particular a very particular line let's say this line so maybe we can think of like this let's say this in this side let's say plus voltage and in this side so this is a zero voltage okay so let's say we think that a very particular point maybe as you go forward in this in the in this act in this directions so maybe like that let's say this is the maximum voltage let's say this is the maximum voltage so voltage let's say let's say like that one okay maybe 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 this one so what does it mean it means that let's say at this point maybe somewhere around here maybe somewhere around here maybe at this point this is the in this point is the maybe is the brightest one that's why this produces the highest voltage and maybe at this point you know brightness is somewhere between the dark and the very white so that's why maybe maybe around this place the voltage is like that okay so this is an imaginary one line you know signal voltage we can think of in this pattern okay now see so if our video camera if our video camera you know move from this point so this i mean in this point the, in the right side as you go forward if our video camera moves from left to right it's exactly this you know pattern of electrical voltage will be produced and this is exactly looks like an analog voltage you see so we can we can think of this is an ft you see this is some voltage there's a function of time in fact this is a function of space right because as we move our video camera moves to the right directions but if we just you know think of that that our video camera you know you know when it starts is scanning for this line so this is the starting time if our starting time is t equal zero so we can think of you know 
this is one line scan time maybe maybe t equal t so we can think that 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 it is starts at zero and ended up with the scan line at time t okay so in that sense we can say that the our video signal is f t function of time right so so this function of time uh, it, as you see this is basically varying in nature so that's why you are saying time varying you know signal so ultimately then an analog signal ft basically samples a time varying image information so image information means this time varying video signals that you know coming you know as a correspondence of the brightness you know mapping right so this is you know how it is and interestingly you know uh, we perform in video camera you know we perform progressive scanning progressive scanning means that it is scans through a complete frame row wise for each time interval so what does it means is for example if, if this is our you know one frame or one scene one of, of an object so then we start from here and then we just you know scan like this one right like like in in this pattern we just scan and when we reset this point and then again we start you know the second line and then go and we, we just scan in this pattern we scan right so this is called progressive so as we see you know as we as we can read the textbook it is the similar way uh, we scan and then we just you know finish the scanning for a complete you know frame so and then we perform the we complete the scan so that's the idea that how we can you know obtain the signal now here you know we have you know some other you know point you need to explain you see you know this video signaling is also you know sometimes it's possible that we do interlacing you know inter interlacing and you know what is interlacing in in analog video we just do simple interlacing so in simple interlacing is what first you know let's say let's say this this is a white line this white line let's say this white line this is white line and let's say we also have in between let's say this line in between we have let's say this line okay this line so let's say this yellow is odd line odd number of lines and let's say this white is let's say even number of line even number of lines so interlacing method in television systems generally what it does is let's say first you know they scan odd number of line and at that time so this odd number of line is scan and they skip you know even number of line right so so i don't know maybe let's say first you know we scan odd line so we scan this one and we don't scan this one we scan this one and then we scan this one then we scan this one in this way we finish you know you know one field so that means this is a complete frame this is a complete frame we need to transmit a complete frame and what we do is in this frame we divide into two fields the first field is just you know let's say odd num odd odd number of lines and then in the second fast field fast field f i e l d fast field is odd and the second field second field is let's say even number of lines so that means after we finish the yellow line and then in the second field in the second attempt and second scanning what we do we just scanning all the white lines so that is the even line so we can say even field right so we have one frame and the one frame is we are dividing to two fields the field one so that means what if we have total let's say 100 lines 100 lines in a in one frame 50 line we can say odd field and 50 line even field okay so that's the thing okay so this is scanning method you know we show here so and we need to know some terminology for our better understanding so you see this solid line can you see the solid line this line this is the solid line and this is the dotted line right so this solid line is scanning we say this is the odd lines so and and the dotted line is scanning you know 
we say these are the maybe even lines okay so so what, what it happens is let's say is scanning how it works so the system video camera system first is scan you know from solid line they first finish the solid line so accordingly it is start you know from p and then it go to q and then when it comes to at this point then it is start from r and this ended from ended on s and in this way it just you know finishes everything in when it reaches to t okay so similarly you know for dotted lines it is start from u at from this point from the middle and then end end here and then again it is start from here and then end here and in this way in it finishes up to here you see for the solid lines it is started in the beginning of a frame from here and finishes there you know for a field finishing and for the dotted line it is start from here in the middle and then finishes from here in this way we try to cover every point of a you know of a frame to be you know to be to be taken the, to be uh, exposed to be transmitted or to be uh, video right okay now you also see the other things is our we, we our video camera let's say when we focus our video camera to take the you know image of of an object of an object right so when it scans from here to here it you know let's say this line from here to here when it reaches at this point now what happens definitely when when it goes from q you know from this point to again start the next line you know it takes some time right you i mean to move our camera you know when it finishes from one light video camera so definitely internally it it is structure and the video systems you need to you know you know again point back to the beginning of this line this horizontal line so at that part for that particular time the video camera you know you know should understand that yes at that time we don't need to scan the line because at the time we are going from right you know rightmost places to the leftmost places and we are beginning a line so that's called so that means what while we are tracing that's good but when we reset this point we need to go back to this point this you know going back to this you know beginning of the line these sorts of things is called retracing and you know when we finish a line and then we start a next line so that's called horizontal retrace because we finish a horizontal line and then we need to begin the next horizontal line so in between we need to you know our camera you know should understand that this is the horizontal line and at that time we don't need to trace so at the time our camera you know will will you know is ignore some of the lines you know so this is called horizontal retrace so in the same way when it reaches the vertical you know then it needs to go back to the you know beginning positions either these positions or these positions right so if it is you know odd frame odd field then it will go back to this place and if it is even field it will go back to this place so so that means when you finish a field when you finish a frame it needs to go back to start in the beginning of the next frame or next field so that's called the vertical retrace so when it finishes one line it needs to start in the beginning line so that called horizontal retrace and when it finishes an entire frame then we need to start again the frame that's called vertical retrace okay so these two things we need to understand so now you see so here that uh, that jumping from q to r that's jumping from q to r this is called horizontal retrace and jumping from t to u so that is jumping from t to u right or v to p or this v to p this is called vertical retrace okay now so let's you know we just you know talk a little bit more on that so we understand what is the analog video signals and and you know, how how the signal is you know captured so various kind of things we understand okay now the another things is you know we need to understand you see 
the odd line and even line we understand that for that we have these sorts of you know uh, image uh, or the scene you know and then what we are doing is we are first taking the even line or odd line and then we are just you know in the next attempt we are taking the remaining lines so sometimes you know it might look that it will you know uh, it will create some problem for the eye for the human eyes right for the human eye maybe you know it might looks you know bad but generally it doesn't you know give any trouble to our human eye but if the object is too fast moving then you know these sorts of you know you know kind of blurry things may occur so these kinds of you know interlacing is not good for very fast moving but otherwise it's fine so scanning might be your interlacing or simply progressive you know there is no interlacing it depends on your systems these days you know for digital media we actually don't do lots of interlacing stops okay so you see this is a you know an a, 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 a imaginary you know kind of scam one scan line uh, you see this is called ntc you know composite video signals this is called electronic signal for one scan line and according to you know ntsc composite video standard you see the line that we are scanning is basically this one you see from here to here this is let's say this is the main main active line that we are scanning for one line signal and you see the low very low voltage are generating if the brightness is you know very low and as the brightness is increases then you go again is the brightness is decreasing and then again increasing and then it's a one line is can how it looks like in terms of electric voltage let's say the very topmost brightest is let's say 0 0.7 volt and let's say we present that the the lowest intensity or the the dark most you know brightness that is the or the black level we produce you know let's say maybe let's say very low voltage that is 0 0.05 voltage and for the whitest point let's say 0 0.7 voltage so in between all of the voltage and and blank means you know zero volt mean blank so that means there is no scanning happening so at that time we say zero voltage okay and you know after is scan line what we need we need a retracing horizontal retracing so that means you know we need some time you know this if this is a let's say for time taken for one line scan maybe maybe some very little time we need to you know provide for horizontal retracing so that means to start the next line we need to go back to the starting of the line our video camera need to start in the point our video camera need to start point in the beginning of next line okay so to do so we need some time so that's all horizontal retrace time okay so then we have this time we need for you know one line scan and this is for horizontal scan so this is together so we can say time taken for one line scan and you know that you know it is good that when we start a line you know we need to synchronize you know so to have the synchronizations we give a negative you know voltage so negative voltage means that we are giving a signal that this is the synchronization signal you know so that you know transmitting you know video camera and the receiving video camera you know they need they understand that where is the beginning and where is the ending of a line so they adjust this you know when they see okay this is the video signal this is the synchronization signal so they understand that when to start a line and and from the beginning when it starts a line then they know that how much time it is for horizontal retracing and at what time we active our camera for scanning okay now let's we you know give a some you know specific example the specific examples is you know n t s e examples NTC is, you know, the National Television System Committee for analog televisions. And these days, almost all are digitals, you know, but still somewhere it is used in the world. So NTC is standard, 
you know, e you know, sometimes it's being used or prom was used to use in North America and Japan primarily. So, uh, you know, it has, you know, you know, 525 scan lines. Okay. So lines per frame was 525 lines per frames. That means, you know, per frames mean frame means one image or one scene object that we can think of in this way. Okay. And in 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 that systems, you know, they have you know 30 frames that is per second, or we can say 30 images per second. Okay. And definitely, if you remember that if we have interlacing, then you know in one frame, one frame we, we will divide into two fields. So that is that means in one field we have 262.5 fields, right? Five lines per field. This number of lines per field, right? So that you, you already know because 262.5, if we just multiplied by two, then we will have you know 525 lines. Okay. Now, if we just you know extend a little bit of our you know things that we have, you know, see that 525. 525 you know lines per frame lines per frame and what we have is 30 frames frames per second more exactly this is 29.97 frames per second of course this is a very peculiar number but this coming mathematically that i'm not showing here okay so then what we have then you see it means we have you know 525 so that is 15000 approximately if we just take this one is 29.97 so approximately we have you know 15734 these you know lines per lines lines per you know second you see per second per second because this lines per frame and this is frames per second so frame frame out so we have this number of lines per second so that means for one line how many seconds we have so we must scan one line in this number of second right this number of second for one line we have this second this mass of time we have so if you just divide one divided by 15,000 you know 734 then you will see this is approximately 63.6 microsecond okay 63.6 microsecond so you see generally generally what we have you know for horizontal retracing for horizontal retracing we you know need you know generally we saw that experimentally around 10 to 11 microsecond so we can say 10.9 microsecond you know this kind of time we need for horizontal retrace horizontal retrace what is that just we need to move point our camera you know in the beginning of the next line that's called horizontal retracing so then the remaining time is that is 63.6 microsecond minus 10.9 microsecond so this is approximately 52. Point seven microsecond we have so this time we have for you know horizontal i mean active line is scanning and this is exactly you know the time you see that 52.7 microsecond 52.7 microsecond for line scanning we have and 10.9 microsecond for horizontal retrace so this all together we had 63.6 microsecond okay so this is you know some examples now let me explain something more in our next you know slide in in our next you know lecture